My mother made me promise to be an artist. She taught me that imagination could take a person anywhere. Mine took me from Indiana to Broadway to Hollywood. She was right. Good morning. Hello, Lou. Mr. Kazan, how are you? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you, sir. Otto, good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Kazan. Good morning, Miss Harris. Perfect, Anna. Thank you, Mr. Kazan. Let's film this, Mike. Yes, sir. What else do we have? Raymond. Let's see where okay, is everybody, he? let's clear. Good morning. Oh, hello. It's nice to see you again. Elia, good morning. Oh, oh good morning. You're shooting. I didn't know. Good morning, Raymond. It's not a problem. We're not shooting with sound. Ah, good. How are you? Good morning, Anna. Julie, you look marvelous. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, Raymond. Good morning, Mr. Massey. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Lovely day. This is what he's wearing in the birthday scene. Turn around for Mr. Kazan. I, think that I like the cloth. Just for you, Raymond. Yeah, you don't think I'm back playing um, Abe Lincoln in this getup, do you? Not at all. It seems right to me, Raymond. All right. It, it feels good. It feels all good. right. Thank you, Julie. Michael, let's shoot Mr. Massey next. Now, can I have one of these that works? Please? Absolutely. We'll get props on that right away. Props. Mr. Massey needs you. Julie, I am so looking forward to this. So am I, Raymond. Good. So am I. Good. Now, uh, do you want this smiling or natural? Oh, naturally. Call you last night, only to tell you how wonderful you were in rehearsals yesterday, Julie. Just so beautifully. Just I, very pleased. I think we've broken through. Oh, yes. Yes, I do too. I do too. James Dean is here. Oh, send him in. Send him in. Raymond, let's stop this for a moment. Hmm? Sorry, everybody. The boy I've cast as Cal is coming in, and I'd like you to meet him. Well, I'd be happy to. He's never done a feature before, and oh. he's on some first-rate stage and TV work in New York. He's a natural, but Raymond, he may strike you as a bit odd, but he's enormously talented. Well, let's take a look. Okay. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy, come meet Raymond Massey. No, he's probably shy. Man can't play my father. He's too old. Get somebody else. Um, okay, I'll talk to him. What? I'll talk to him. What the hell were you thinking in there? Raymond Massey is a highly respected actor, and you've deeply offended him. You said I offended him? Of course you deeply offended him. Good. Why good? Because I need him to hate me. ready good let's shoot this one okay we're going people let's all settle down and 
Roll camera. We're rolling. Scene 163 Apple. Take three. Fade. Parker. And action. Cal, you'll have to give it back. No, I, I, made, I made it for you, Dad. I, I want you to have it. You'll have to give it back. To who? I can't give it To back. the people you got it from. The British Purchasing Agency? I can't give it back to them, Dad. Then give it back to the farmers you robbed. We didn't rob anybody, Dad. We paid two cents a pound. Two, two, two cents over market for that stuff. Cal, I signed my name. And boys go out and some of them die. And some live helpless without arms or legs. Not one will come back untorn. Do you think I could take a profit from that? I don't want the money, Cal. I couldn't take it. I... But thank you for the thought. I'll, I'll keep it for you. I'll, I'll wrap it up. And, and, and I can't and take it. I won't take it. Son. I'd be happy if you gave me something. Well, something like your your brother. Something honest and and human and good. Now, don't be angry, son. If you want to give me a present, give me a good life. That's something I can value. Mm. No, Cal. Mm. Cal, I... I... I Damn it! I'm sorry, Gadge. I'm sorry. Paddock! Gadge, may I speak to you a moment? Privately. Okay, let's not everybody fall apart. What's up, man? Why is he trying to hug me that way? It's infuriating. What he's supposed to do is turn from me and exit. That is one. It, this let the last moment is mine. I understand. What he's doing is humiliating my character. I understand. I'll, I'll talk to him. I'll take care of it, man. Please do. Right where we want him, but I need one more. You, you got another one in you? You just let me know when you're ready, okay? This time, uh, try to kiss him. Raymond. I've talked to him, Raymond. He's very sorry. But well, I should think. I don't know what to do with him either. I really need your help right now. If you could do me one favor. What do you want? If you could just stay in the scene and react in character, no matter what he oh, does, Lord, no matter what he does, if you could just wait for me to yell, cut. You have no idea how difficult this is. He is. I understand, so but he's a young man. Yes, he is. You're a brilliant actor. You can help him, help him, and help, help, help me because I don't know what else to do. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right thanks. All right, everybody, let's take it from Adam's line. I sign my name right through Cal's exit, and no stops, no matter what. Okay, everyone, back to one. Back to one. I sign my name right through the end, okay? All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's go quickly. Roll camera. Roll. Scene 163 Apple, take four. That's Slate it. Marker. And action. Cal, I sign my name, and boys go out and some die. And some live helpless without arms or legs. Not one will come back untorn. Do you think I could take a profit from that? I don't want the money, Cal. I couldn't take it. But... Well, thank you for the thought. I, I, I'll keep it for you. I'll, I'll just wrap it up. And... I'll never take it. Son, I would be happy if you'd given me something... Well, like your brother's given me. Something honest and human and good. Oh, don't be angry, son. If you want to give me a present, give me a good life. That's something I could value. <laughs> Cal. Cal. Uh, Cal. Cal. Uh, Cal. Uh, 
Print that one, please. That's no better than that. Second gate. Did you see that? Did you see that? I did. It was brilliant. Thank you. Right well, and feeds them hay. And when he opens the shed and they just all laugh when he just drives out our little <laughs> puppy cat. What is he saying? It, it's a poem, Daddy. He's memorized the three entire verses of James Whitcomb Ravi's Raggedy Man. I'm trying to read my paper. It's a lovely poem, Wynn. Fine. You two take the front room. Daddy's upset with me. Now he loves you. It's not your fault, Jimmy. I need some I'm gonna be leaving. Please don't leave me, Fred. Please. Doctors, they need to, um... They need to do some things to make me get better. Can I go with you? I wish you could. He's gonna get me after school. He's staying with me. Daddy. Daddy doesn't like me anymore. Of course he does. He loves you. He won't help me. He's not mad at you, Jimmy. Now you just keep showing Daddy your love and he'll love you back. It's not Daddy's fault, Jimmy. I was nine years old when my mother died. My grandmother Emma came out to Los Angeles to bring me and my mother's body back to Indiana for the funeral. I think it would be better if you came along with us I now. I can't with... do that, honey. The boy is so I upset. I can't leave work just now. I really can't. I'll be there at the funeral. All aboard! Take good care of your grandma, Jim. Go 
told you. My father never came to my mother's funeral. In fact, he never came to Indiana at all. I moved in with my Aunt Hortense and Uncle Marcus. Son, you can't stay here. Tell me that time, Mr. Walter. Yeah, Uncle. One of these days, James. Yeah. You got anything uh, for me from California? No. Well, just the usual. One ads, circulars. Sorry. Yeah. Is that you? Come on in. Thank you for letting me stay here with you. Well, we talked it out. We can stay here a month or so till you're on your feet. It's fine with us. Well, this is Ethel. Oh, hi. Your dad's told me so much about you, I'm glad to finally get to meet you. Ethel's my wife, Jim. We're married. Let me show you the guest room. I mean your room. I 
hated business school. Felt like I was wasting my time. I'd done some acting in high school and I loved it. But more than anything, I wanted to study acting. Like in plays and movies? Yes, sir. Um, how are you planning on making a living? Acting. Mm. You are a dreamer. Just like your mom. Well, I don't think that was our understanding. You can stay in business school, huh? you can stay with us here. But you study acting. You're on your own. Next in is um, Byron and or James Dean. Over here, kid. Which is your real name, Byron or James? Uh, what do you think is better for an actor? Go with your real name, less confusing. What can I do for you? I want to study here in your professional acting class, Mr. Whitmore. Are you any good? Well, um, um, I, I did a couple plays in, in high school, and people said I was pretty good, but I... Sir, I don't... I want to be just good. I want to be great. Got any money? No. I sure don't. Great ones never do. All right, kid. You're in. Hey. Hmm. So, uh, how come you got a card up at Whitmore Studio? You an actor? I'm next to Brando. I'm the world's greatest actor. Who's Brando? Jimmy, Billy, up front. And this in from Billy owns a watch repair shop. Jimmy, he's picking up your watch that he cleaned for you. Yeah. Billy, come here. Come here. Come here. You know what's stolen? You call the cops. And you gotta keep Jimmy here until they arrive so you can collect the reward. Don't let him go. Okay. Jimmy. Got the setup? Yeah. Whenever you're ready. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm here to pick up that watch right there in the case. Yeah. It's not ready. Really, um, just give me a minute. No, no, no that's, that's fine. No, 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 no. Stay cool. Why don't you give me the watch, man? Okay, give me a minute. Hey! 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 Knock it off! Come on! Jimmy, knock it off! Knock it off! I didn't tell you! Knock it off! Jimmy! Knock it off! Jimmy! Hey! Knock it off! Knock it off!
Stanislavski. You're next. Come on in. You got to a lot of fights? No, not a lot. You will. If you let yourself go over the edge like you just did. Jimmy, acting is acting. You can't get confused. You gotta know where to draw the line. Yeah, no, I, I know. I, I mean, he was good, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Yes, he was good. Wait, Mr. Rumble. I wanna ask you something. Do you think I got the goods to be a real actor? Yes, I do, Jimmy. Yes, I do. <laughs> I decided to move to New York. Every actor I cared about, Brando, Clift, even Whitmore, all worked in New York. New York was big and lonely, and I loved it. Being a struggling actor in New York in the 1950s was the best. It's the right place at the right time. I stopped worrying about my mother and father for a while. Dead broke. It didn't matter. That was home. Off the stage, off the stage. Let's go. Next five numbers. 120 through 124. Shut up! Shut up! I want to see those numbers. I want to see them today. 123. 120. 124. Today. Today. Thank you. Smoke? Yeah. Thanks, man. What's your name? I can't decide. What are your choices? Well, I got I got James Dean, Jimmy Dean, and Byron Dean. Which one's your real name? James. Byron's my middle name. Go with your real name. What's that? I know. Jimmy's an eight-year-old boy, and Byron's a dead poet with a clubbed foot. Oh, and James is king. <laughs> What's your name? Martin Landau. Where are you from? Well, I want to come home and meet my mom. Yeah, can you cook? You like matzo ball soup? My favorite. You're invited. Where are you living? Uh, some dirt hole, rented room. Let's go, fellas. One twenty-five. 129. Yeah. What number you got? 231. 216. Let's cut out, man. Cattle calls are for losers. Yeah? Unless you got an agent sending you in, you're kidding yourself. All right. You got an agent? If I had an agent, would I be blowing my time with a goof like you? Come on. Hey, who is Brando's agent in New York? Louie. What? I'll take him on. I have a hunch I can sell him. To who? To the Ringling Brothers? Jane, he's too strange. If this strange people won't be able to get out of their minds, I think he's a star. Let me just see what I can do with him. All right, you do it on your own time, not on my time. What am I going to do with you? Bring your chair over. Put down leads only. You can't just audition for leads. Why not? Well, for one thing, you've got to eat. No, Miss Stacy. Look, I. I only want to audition for important parts. I mean, parts that I care about. You know, even if I have to starve. Fine. 
Thank you, Miss Daisy. I'm a really lucky guy. I've got the best agent in the world. Get me those eight by tens. Work here? I don't work here. So, uh, you like some kind of writer or something? You're an actor. Jane Daisy just signed me. Oh, congratulations. Are you an actor? Actress. I'm an actress. Well, what are you writing, Miss Actress? Audition scene. Yeah? Who wrote it? Well, that's what I'm trying to do. Oh, so, can I see it? Uh, yeah. Well, this is the first page. So? Yeah, this is good. What, uh, what are you auditioning for? The studio. Actor studio? Yeah. Kind of like some kind of lifetime member there, right? Yeah. What's your name? No, don't, 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 don't. Why not? I don't know. How about... How about I uh, take you out tonight? I'll get you ride on my motorcycle. And then after I take you home after the movie, you want me to kiss. You can tell me then. You guys seen partner? Uh, yeah. I did. <laughs> Come on! Come on! <laughs> Come this on! Is the summer. Really there. Everest! Come on! Reverse. That's us. You're on next. Are you ready? We're ready. Thank you. No, thank God. Okay, where, where are your glasses? No, they're wrong for my character. Wait a minute. Can you see anything without your glasses? Yeah, I see fine. It's, uh, what are you thinking? Yeah. How, how am I? Yeah, very, very funny. Put on your glasses. I can't, Chris. They're, they're back in my place. Why'd you leave them at your place? Guys, they're wrong for my character. I don't want to be tempted to use them. Dean, oh. White, let's go. Oh, oh sorry. I didn't... That's a chair. You're apologizing to a chair. I'm telling you, Jimmy, you never know. I mean, look at me when I auditioned for Tennessee Williams. I thought I was terrible. You were terrible. You didn't get the part. It's just a detail. Hi. I'm Rogers Brack. Oh, hi. The director. Mm-hmm. A mutual friend tells me that you're enormously talented. Um, yeah, I guess. I know of something that you just might be right for. A TV drama. It's a very good role. So, would you like to audition? Yeah, sure. There's a party at my place tonight. How would you feel about stopping by? We could chat about the project. There'll be some interesting men there. Uh, 
Yeah, that, uh, that sounds like a ball. Here's my card. Why don't you come by late, say, midnight? Uh, yeah, uh, midnight at, uh, perfect. Good. See you later. I know. That man's a class A fagel, you know that, right? Yeah, man's a class A fagel, I would paying the job. Both of us? Both of us. We are in. Yeah. studio <laughs> back. Dear father, I hope you're well. I think of you often. My life in New York is a happy one. I'm finding work as an actor. I've been cast in a television play that'll be broadcast live all over the country in two weeks' time. I hope you can watch. Yo, Joey. Come on down and play, Joey. Joey. I hate to be wrong, but you were right. Thank you, Lily. Jimmy, you were fantastic. Oh, I'm so proud. We all won. Side, side. <laughs> here, 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 here. Double black labels. The nectar of the gods. Hey, uh, Jerry, give me two more of these. Thank you. This is for me, man. I was just on national TV. Oh, so you're on TV and you're too cheap to buy me a drink. <laughs> Raise your glasses, everybody. Raise your glasses. I'd like to make a toast to James Dean. Who's just achieved what we all aspire to? Paid work. Yeah. Uh, Father, it's, it's James. Uh, you, you get a chance to watch the play on TV. It was tonight. It, it's the one I wrote you about. No, I, no, I don't. I don't mind. I, I understand. Yes, sir.
Okay, James Dean is next. James Dean. Yeah. James Dean? Uh, Mr. Dean, you're, you're reading for an Arab, not a cowboy. Would you mind removing your hat? Sure. Okay. Can you see to read with those broken glasses? No, not so well, but uh, I mean, I'd like to give it a shot if you don't mind, Mr. Rose and Mr. Mann. Okay with me. Let's start from uh, Act Two, Scene One, Bahir's entrance. Okay. Okay. Page thirty-six. We're going to pick it up in the middle of the page. It's right there. <clears throat> sir, did that doctor tell you anything about me, sir? Why? Is there something to tell? Uh, no, uh, sir. Um, he's a he's a good doctor. Are you hungry? No. Okay. I'm sorry. I. You're right. I'm having a bit of trouble seeing through the tape. My glasses. How long will it take to get them fixed? Yeah, it's not the it's not the time. It's it's the ten bucks. Hang on. Come here, kid. Get your glasses fixed. Come back this afternoon. Around 4.30? Uh, yeah, okay. 4.30 is great. <laughs> Thank you. Don't forget your hat. All right. That's a nice rosary. Nice kid. You think? It's adorable. Oh, let's try it again, okay? Let's, let's do one more. We can get it this time. Okay. Sir, did the doctor tell you anything about me? No, 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 no. That doctor. And there's another sir at the end. See it? Huh? Let's try, let's try it again. Sir... Did that doctor tell you anything about me? Sir? Perfect. <laughs> All right, hey. You got change for a tank? Sir. Did uh, that doctor tell you anything about me, sir? Well, uh, why? Is there something to tell? Oh, no, sir. He, he's a good doctor. Are you hungry? Uh, no. Oh. I brought it too soon. Let's see. Well, that's enough. Thank you, Jimmy. Wait, wait, wait. I don't really like him, Danny. He's good. A little too weird, no? Yeah, I'd like to hear him read with Jerry. Well, I'll try that. Jimmy. Can you stick around for a half hour? We'd like you to read with Geraldine Page. Yeah, sure. I'll, uh, I'm open. I'll, I'll be over there. Hey, you took my ten bucks and uh, didn't get your glasses fixed. Uh, yeah, I used it to eat. Um, but I, I memorized it so I didn't have to read it. You, uh... Forgive me? Sure. We're very interested in you for this part. Thanks. <laughs> Beast Gras is a very confusing place, don't you think so, Michelle? No. Well, perhaps not. Perhaps I only think so because you've been away in that awful hospital. Jimmy, come on, Jimmy. Come on, get up. By your side. Sorry. Madame, I am uh, so happy 
happy that my gentleman came home, that uh, was too lively. Hold it! Hold it! Everybody take ten. Everybody, we're on ten, but let's okay, stay Danny. close. Jimmy, come over here. Over here. Come on. Come on. Clear the set. I don't go too far. I've, I've been saying this 40 ways to Christmas, but you don't seem to want to get it through your head. Thick head. What? The expression is get it through your thick head. I'm breaking my ass trying to get this turkey off the ground. I have no time for your games. Now, the name of the play is The Immoralist. It's not let's hear James Dean mumble, but when am I going to have the privilege of hearing you clearly? Huh? I have been extremely patient thus far. But frankly, you cut my part down so much, I don't even know who I am playing huh. anymore. And this upsets me. So, if that means mumbling through a few rehearsals, then you're going to have to be patient too. Okay. How'd you like that acting? Was Could you hear me okay? It's very convincing. While we were rehearsing The Immoralist, I got a call from Jane Dacey to audition for Aliyah Kazan for East of Eden. Kazan had directed Brando and Streetcar and On the Waterfront. Tell us about yourself, Jimmy. Um, well, you know, there's not much to tell. I was born in Indiana and moved out to California when I was about five till I was nine. My mother died. And then... Uh, I uh, was sent back to Indiana to live with my aunt and uncle on the farm. What was it like living on a farm? Uh, I wasn't much of a farmer. Uh, I rode my motorcycle. I used to uh, chase the cows. And they'd start running in there. I'd just start swinging from side to side. <laughs> How about your father? Well, we don't, uh, we don't really talk much. We don't like each other. In fact, we hate each other. See, I'm an actor because it's the best way I know how to express myself. I'm not very good with talking. I think you can tell. When do you open in the G play? Next Thursday. Mr. Steinbeck and I will be coming on. If you're coming, don't tell me when it's. It's better if I don't know. You think you can handle Cal? Yes, I do, sir. Good. We'll contact your agent. Jane Dacey, right? Yeah. Sally? That's it. That's the kid I want to go with for Cal. What do you think? 
Mr. Kazan, that young man is Cal. No, Five minutes, Miss Page. Five minutes, Mr. Jordan. Where the hell is he? I don't know, Mr. Rose. I don't know. Jerry. Oh, my gosh. Can't touch my breath. Go enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. Who is he? Look how handsome you are. Look how handsome you are. study dress we're going we're going to pretend it's already done mr holmes i'm everywhere i just get a little leash put him on a leash we can't how is this how is this We can run a year on your reviews. Congratulations. Congratulations. What's this? What's this? Two-week notice. I'm quitting. Oh, very funny. No, very I'm funny. I'm not joking. <laughs> I've got a movie. I'm going to California in two weeks. You're not kidding? No. Good luck to you, kid. Why'd I do it like that, Marty? He's nice to me, why? I'm always trying to make people reject me, why? You're an ambitious, selfish son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Stop near here. There's, there's somebody I want you to meet. An actor? Uh, no, sir. It's my father. I'd love to, Jimmy, but another time. We really have to keep moving. Please, sir. It's, it's important. Driver. You can go. Sure. Just take a right. Next right. Father. Hello. Uh, this is Mr. Eli Kazan. He's directing the film that I'm doing. Oh, well, happy to meet you, sir. Same here. And you two will have to tell me when this moving picture of yours comes out, so, uh, hell, I can go see it. Oh, yeah, you'll be the first person I tell. Oh, right, that's good. Uh, I'm sorry, but, uh, I can't invite you in. Ethel and I are expecting guests. Uh, thank you, sir, for taking Jim into your moving picture. Nice to see you, Father. Thanks for the time, Mr. Dean. Yes, sir. Winnie. Winnie. That must have hurt. We'll use it. All your boy has to do is sign it, Dick. Jane Dacey hooked me up with Dick Clayton, a movie agent who would look after me in Hollywood. Here we go. We're all signed, Mr. Warner. You know, before we start shooting Eden, I think I'm going to send your boy off to uh, Palm Springs for a couple of weeks. Have you line out the sun, you know, get a tan. Well, we should fatten him up a bit, too, huh? <laughs> You're too skinny. Way too skinny. You look like a refugee. You're never going to get rich unless you look rich. Jack. The kid's been sitting around town riding a motorcycle. How much am I getting paid for that? A thousand a week, ten weeks guarantee. <coughs> <coughs> Is this true? You ride a motorcycle? Oh, uh, yeah. I, uh, I just bought a Triumph one, uh, 110. You know, like they used in the, in the wild ones. 
Get rid of it. The studio backs stars, not corpses. You understand me, don't you? Say yes. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> Boy. Thank you, Dick. The thing that's wonderful about Massey is that he's so easy to get off guard. He's so stiff and he's so wooden. Just those, just those quick moments. Those are the moments that I'm going to use. Those are the wonderful moments. So what I want you to do the next time we're dealing with the Bible scene, yeah. just on his close-ups, just on his close-ups, the one you swear like you never swore before, because the man hates that stuff. Okay. He hates it so wooden, but it works for us. It's wonderful. Who's that? That's Caesar and that's Brutus. Oh. Huh. Girl. Pierre Angeli. She's uh, working opposite Newman in Silver Chalice. Do me a favor. Bring, that, bring the guy in the skirt over here. Come on, he looks more like your type. Can I have a word with you? Mr. Kazer. Hello. What is your name? Stefan. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, my God. I, I, I have to ask, where did you find that dress? I have been looking everywhere for something like this. <laughs> well, you may try it on. If you want. I hear he's up against Paul Newman for the big fight movie MGM's doing. Well, I'm sure he'd trade in the movie for the girl. What girl? Girl. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna have a problem there. What do you mean? Pierre, what cosa fa? Mama, I'm And uh, who is this? Mama, this is... Um, James Dean. He's an actor. And this is my mother, Mrs. Pierangeli. Ah. So, what do you want with my daughter? Uh, nothing. Good. You won't be disappointed. And the other thing. Her real name was Anna Maria Pierre Angeli. I loved her like I'd never loved anyone. She was my reason for being alive. I used to wish that if she died, that I would die in the very same moment. I borrowed a beach house in Malibu where we could be totally alone. I got an actress's mother calling me, telling me you're molesting her daughter. It's a lucky thing I've been watching your dailies. You'd be out on your ass. Ha, 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 ha. This genuine walnut. You scratch that, it cost me $2,000. Well, that's more polite. Is there anything else? Yes, there's plenty else, wise guy. If you're thinking of marrying her, forget it. You think 14 and 15 year old girls want their heart throb married? On the other hand, you want to marry Miss Ravioli? Go right ahead. Just find yourself another studio. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. We got two weeks left on Eden. I know Nick Ray has been talking to you about Rebel without a cause. And he wants you for it. But you know what I told him? I told him I got to think about it. Is there anything else? Don't play it smart with me, Jimmy. I'm a lot tougher than you. A lot tougher. Don't get out of my car, please.
drive on. She's Catholic, so she's not going to break us up once we're married. Jimmy, we just need to be married. Just a second. Here, eyes here. Can you understand me? Yes. Yes. You do? Get, get over. Yes, I understand you. We've gone over it. In quantitas. Go over here. Go over here. Jimmy, why do we have to wait? Why do we have to wait? I'm making a movie right now. Okay, okay. You look like, uh, you look like the Madonna. We can elope. We can elope. Yes. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, yeah, you look at me. All right? Come here, come on, come here. Look, just let me finish making this movie, and then we'll get married. Yes. I promise. Well, maybe my mother's right. Maybe you're just using me to get into the papers. What do you think, darling? Well, that's what my mother thinks. What does your mother do? Okay. We just had one night here alone without your mother in bed with us. She wants me to marry Victor Mo. She what? She wants me to marry Victor Moan. You know, he's Catholic, and she likes him a lot. Oh, well, so is the Pope. Why don't you marry him? I can't fight her. Why not? Don't you have a will of your own? It's not about will. Uh, what is it? It's a matter of... It's a matter of family and being Catholic. Hey, listen. And what? You tell Victor Moan and your crazy mother to stay out of our lives, all right? You don't understand. I understand, you? but you're not listening to Stop me. Stop yelling at me. Open it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a print, a wrap, and we are finished. Have you seen Jimmy? He's not in his trailer. Jimmy? Let that go. Always knew I was going to get an actor like you for Rebel. I think divine fate calls the shots for a director like me. You know what I mean? Brando. What are they, kidding? Brando is too old, man. You are fresh. You are perfect for this part. Perfect. Yes, sir. We gotta find somebody. somebody for the girl. Huh? What about Natalie Wood? 
No, really. What do you think of her? I'm, I want to know. I really want to know. Because, Jimmy, it's just you and I. We are on this quest together, baby. All the way down the line. Huh? What do you think? Huh? She's a child star, man. Child star, huh? Jimmy, this girl is 17 years old, and she is built like the, like the Pieta. I know. She doesn't look it, right? But I'm telling you that underneath those simple little childish cotton frocks, she is built like a marble masterpiece. Oof. Jimmy. Jimmy, listen to me. You're young. You're wonderful and you're young, but if you had been there for the start of Helen Hayes' career, you would know what I see in this girl. Genius. Pure genius. That's what I see in you, Jimmy. Genius. Man, Rebel Without a Cause is going to be the first visionary movie ever made about teenagers. You mark my word. Mark my word! You like jazz? Yeah, I like jazz. Chet Baker mean anything to you? Yeah. He's playing down the beach tonight. You want to go? Yeah, I'd love to. Solid Baker. <laughs> to go to New York, all right? Come here, look. What? Look, look, look. Come, to, come to New York with me, all right? Where I can't you go New to New York. I can't leave my mother. Why? You wouldn't understand. Look. What? It'll be two weeks, okay? Two weeks. Hmm? I have to be back to the uh, do Rebel. Well, I may not be here when you come back. What? You heard me. I may not be here when you come back. What, yeah, what is that supposed to mean? I don't want to stay here anymore. I want to go. I'm gone. Fine, go. I'm leaving. I'm gone. Hey, Pierre. You're breaking my heart, God. You're leaving. Father, I want to talk to him. Um, he's away for a while. Is there something that I can help you with, James? No, um, no, I need to talk to him. I'll tell him that. Are you all right, James? Yeah. We follow you in the newspapers. Your father's very proud of your success. Yeah. Of course he is, James. Nice to see you, James. you to marry Vic DeMarley. Why well, she gotta marry him? Can't you just buy one of his records? He's driving bananas, Marty. Well, for you, bananas is not a long drive. Jimmy, you, you guys are meant for each other. It's perfect casting. Pick up the phone. Tell her you love her. Tell her you're sorry. Tell her anything. Go, call her. You got the nickels. Pronto, hello. Is Pierre there? Who is this? It's James Dean. She does not want to talk. Just put her on the phone, please. No, 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 no. She's out there choosing the flowers for her wedding. Goodbye. <laughs>
Not his keeper. Well, show, Jack. It's a benefit for the studio. Well, show. I'll tell you something. If he doesn't show, I'm going to ruin the bastard. Even if I have to pull the plug on Rebel. Jack, you look great. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, we should probably get going, guys. We're going to be late. All right, let me do it. We're not going. What do you mean we're not going? I'm not even interested in this glitzy glamour crap, all right? They want to wear monkey suits, fine. Not me. Jimmy, you spent $174 on this dress. Come on. This is my first tuxedo, Jimmy. All right, Jerry, why don't you give a round to everybody on me for spending the night? Maybe he's laying dead somewhere. It's no excuse. What did I tell you, Anna? What did I tell you? Oh, God. It's an Academy Award performance. But he's... He's a great actor. <laughs> I'm going to write that, Jack. Oh, I'm so pleased that I'm so truly pleased. Now, is he... Is he really as difficult as everyone says he is? Difficult? Yes. Jimmy? <laughs> Hattie's like a son to me. Oh, come on, Jack. Come on. He is a teensy bit. <laughs> okay, but, but you mustn't write that. You have to promise me. You have to promise me that you will not write that. Please. <sighs> All right. You'll owe me one. <laughs> nothing for nothing, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's a deal. Great. You know what I'm going to write? What? I'm going to write that he is America's... New free spirit. Uh, 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 Hattie, I I, Hattie, no. listen. Right, he's America's newest rebel. He's rebel? A, yes, he's a rebel. Like us. You know, I don't care about reviews, and I don't even care about grocers. There's going to be no more crap like you pulled on me in New York, fella. Mm. Shut up! Bernie Plotkin gave me this. Question. Are you a homosexual, Mr. Dean? Answer. No, I'm not a homosexual, but I'm also not going to go through life with one hand tied behind my back. Did you say that? You said that to a fan magazine? It's true. It's true. What are you, a crazy person? You think homosexuals sell tickets to teenagers? I don't want you to say any more crazy things to magazines. If you have anything to say, you say, because I'm making you a star, you say, thank you, Mr. Warner. Thank you. You say with Pierre's mother against me? You should kiss my ass for that. You'd be miserable with Pierre Angeli. Her mother would cut your balls off and plant them on Mussolini's grave. Let me tell you something. Pierre Angeli is gone. She is really gone. She's married. Forget her. That's such a, a wonderful talent. And a wonderful career ahead of you. You should learn to trust me. You're like a son to me. <laughs> What's funny? And you just gotta trust me too. Of course I trust you. Are you gonna light my cigar? It smells good, huh? Yeah. You wanna try it? Everybody, he's coming. Roll sound. 76, take one. <coughs> We're rolling. All right, Jimmy. 
Jimmy. How you doing, son? So it's got 200 horsepower, 1300 cc engine, right here, uh, dual Solex carbs. Whole body's made of aluminum, so it weighs about 1100 pounds. Watch it, man. Oh, you know that, uh, Car racing is for idiots. Well, you're working for me. And I say no racing cars. <laughs> you find that funny, huh? We're signing a deal that will pay you a million dollars. And for a million dollars, I'm telling you, no more racing cars. While I'm shooting. I beg your pardon? When I'm not shooting, I'm on my own, Jack. If you don't like that, you can take oh, it. Oh, 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 oh. You're going to say something you're going to regret. Come on, Jack. Why? Uh oh. Get rid of it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? Please gather around. Everybody, come on in. We're here today to celebrate a great new Warner's movie star, James Dean. Jamie, come on up. <laughs> James Dean, who drives me crazy, and a million-dollar contract which proves me crazy. <laughs> when the cork pops, the deal is done. All right, but, you uh, know, no deal unless I get the cork out. That's right. Now, watch out, everybody. You know, he's crazy. Oh, 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 oh. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you Oh, you I love you and I hate you. I hate you and I hate you. <laughs> when I started shooting Giant, nothing went right between the director, George Stevens, and me. Maybe it was because I missed Pierre. Or maybe it was because Stevens reminded me of my father. Is he? I'm sorry, Mr. Stevens, but he won't come to the set. He said you kept him waiting too long between takes. What? He says he's done for the day. Come on, I'll take care of it. Jim, we're ready to shoot. Not me. Not today. Come on, son. Let's go. The well's rigged. We're losing the light. Let's get out on the set. You know, you keep me waiting hours preparing for some scene. You never even get around to shooting. So I ain't working today. When you do it again, I'm going to take two days and then three. All right. Put Dean's clothes on his stand in. We'll shoot it without him. Come on! Come on! You can put that long rock face in your album, hey. not me! Oh, you don't know what acting is, stupid son of a bitch! Come on, old man! Come on. I guess that's a wrap for today. You. Huh? I need to talk to you. Ethel's waiting for me. Well, then why don't you let her wait? And uh, hold on, young man. 
Don't take that attitude to me. No, I need to talk to you right now. No, but I don't. No, have to look, do everybody it. thinks I'm great except you. Well, fine. Don't, don't you read the papers? Me. I'm in the papers. Oh, I see. I everybody mean, wants I to meet me except you. Why? Why is that? Just shut up and listen to me. Why don't you talk to me? You're my father. Please. And you, I deserve some damn respect. Dad, I'm nine years old. Nine years old now. Open your mouth and talk to me. You talk to me. Dad, please. Please. Hey, Whitney. Talk to me, please. Whitney, what's going on here? Uh, this is my father that get in your house. Is this your son, Whitney? Yeah, this is my boy. You two all right? No, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Whitney, I shouldn't be fighting with him out here in public. I understand. Now, where do you want to go? We got to go somewhere else. Okay. Beautiful view. This is uh, where my house is gonna be. I own that land over there too. Nice car. Yeah, it's aluminum. I only made thirty. Well, it must have cost a lot. I got a lot. Yeah. This town is yours, isn't it? I'm doing pretty good. You like LA, Father? Do I like LA? Well, I'll tell you something, young man. If I could find the edge of this town, I'd leave it. But you're the edge of this town now. Why do you do it, Father? Why don't you send me away? Why don't you come to Mother's funeral? Just talk to me. Yeah, but I don't have to talk to you. You're my father. No, I'm not. I'm not your father. And your mother told me that. Yeah. Your mother and my wife told me that I'm not, well, I might not be your dad. Told me just before she died. She wanted to set things straight, I guess. See, when she was 18 years old, she started seeing this other guy. He was married with kids and couldn't break it off. A couple of weeks after we were married, she found out that she was pregnant with you. And not knowing, I was the happiest man alive for about nine years. But then she just had to tell me the truth. And uh, I just couldn't live with that. Hey, you know, you, your mother was brave telling me the truth like she did. And I was too prideful. I couldn't find the damn courage to forgive her. And so I got cheated out of my wife. And I cheated myself of having you as my son. And I'm proud of you, Jim. And I'm sorry that I acted so bad to you all these years. Go to work, sir. Good, sir. Good. Ready? Let's go! Let's 
go for picture, everybody. Now that's picture. Here we go. Make it happen. Facts ready. Ready. Sound ready. Ready. Camera ready. Ready. Jimmy. Let's roll. Stage. Scene two fifty three. Take one. And action. Weird thing to name a car, man. I don't know. Maybe. My mechanic, Rolf Wetherick, and I decided to drive my car to a race in Salinas. It was a beautiful, clear day. The road seemed almost deserted. Got it. Times? You know why I get hammered? <laughs> Opposite. They said you're gonna get bigger than Brandon and Cliff together. Can you believe it? <laughs> What's that for? He's turning left. He's got a shit. I took the train ride back to Indiana again. This time my father came with me. 